Hello, Internet! This is the Undertaker of Gaming, coming to you today to do an Undertaker Let's Play. I'm uh, here with my much, much better half, Devin. Devin, say hello to the Internet. Hello, Internet! Great, fantastic. So today, we are going to be playing Bionic Commando Rearmed came out back in 2008. It is a fantastic reimagining of the original 8-bit game, and even includes the original Nazis. So, let's go kick some Nazi ass. What do you say? Alright, I think we're going to start to play the game on medium. Um, easy, as stupid as it sounds, it, it does make the game way too easy. It's too easy on easy? Well, with easy, you never really have to worry about whether or not you're... Um, you, you, you can pretty much just, like, duck under every bullet. Um, the enemies never really alternate between firing high and low. Plus, it adds in platforms over certain pits so that you can... It makes it much, much harder to be able to fall to your death. Um, I, I personally, I just do not like that feature at all. I, I think it it takes a lot away from the game. I mean, if, if you're not going to be able to actually, you know, get over certain pitfalls, that's what the whole idea of practicing a game is about. You know, I, 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 it seems stupid to sit there and play a game and then go, well, I'm not really that good, so I'm just going to go ahead and take away a bunch of these places where I can die. No challenge means no fun? Yeah, I mean, if a game isn't challenging and occasionally makes it go, FUCK! Then what's the point of playing it? Alrighty, let's head over to Area 1. Um, that little bullet that we picked up earlier, that was a uh, upgrade to our revolver, so you can fire three shots at once instead of the standard two. Makes a big difference. Alrighty, let's begin. Are we in the real game now? Yeah. Oh. This is, uh... Yeah, this is, like, exactly how the game was, uh, how it looked in the, the 8-bit era. Um, all of the maps have been wonderfully recreated in this fantastic-looking 3D layout. And they added in some, uh, new interesting features. Like, instead of, in the original game, you used to just, uh, wiretap in order to gain information from the enemy, but now you have this hack enemy network feature that I think is kind of interesting. You saw these, uh, these 3D puzzles, and they, they can definitely be quite challenging. What's the goal of these 3D puzzles? Um, okay, so you got this, uh, ball here. Mm -hmm. This little yellow ball that you can see in the middle of your screen. Yep. And you can rotate, you know, a full 360 degrees all the way around. And the ball is always going to shoot um, directly away from you. So what you need to do is, you know, I, I can, I, I'll show you here because it's a practice room. doesn't matter. I can, it's not going to set off the alarm. So if you make a mistake and fire off, you're going to set off the alarm. You're going to be plagued by a bunch of troops, and yeah, it's gonna pretty much ruin your whole friggin' day. But, um, yeah, I mean, they, they, as you can see, they change every time. Um, in medium mode, they generally are pretty easy because you have no time limit, and it's, it's mostly just, you know, getting your ball from point A to point B. You know, there, there's no time constraint, there's nothing you have to really worry about, so you can stop and actually think about everything. And they put uh, at least one of those in every one of the levels, and I, I definitely think it's, um... It's, it's a much-needed upgrade to the original game. In that, like, in the original game, you would just go ahead and just start wiretapping. And the wiretapping... It, it was always hit or it was always a total gamble whether or not you got caught by the enemy. You, you had no idea what was going to trigger and what wasn't. So 
the, you know, there, there was really no point in seeing what, you know, unless you really needed to know some information about the upcoming boss, there was really no point to doing it. Alright, and in each level, you also need to contact headquarters. Captain Spencer, it's such an honor to work with you. I'm Agent MA1. The pleasure's all mine. So what you got for me? First things first, there are communication rooms like this in every Imperial base. You should try to access them all. They might hold valuable information, and once you establish contact with us from a base, we can upload access codes to your arm. That way you can open doors that were previously locked. Sounds good. Upgradable arm? Uh, well, yeah, you have a bionic arm that also doubles as like a hacking implement. And you have to use, you have to find each one of these uh, communication rooms before you can actually move on to the second part of the stage and then the boss. Also, I managed to disable the network security in this facility. The alarm won't go off now, even if you fail when you try to hack the network. Yeah, that's, that's why I just said. Okay. You should try to use this opportunity to hone your hacking skills. This might be your only chance to do so without the risk of sounding the alarm. I'll give it a shot. Good job, Agent. My pleasure. Underneath your current location, there's a cave. The entrance is close by, and I've uploaded the access code to your arm. So doors are unlocked after I acquire the access code. Got it. Yep. Try to contact HQ free. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Basic beginning of game stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, if, if you, you know, played the original Bionic Commando, you most likely already know all this info. I mean, the only real big change is the fact that there are um, completely new bosses, which is definitely a welcome change because, to be perfectly honest, the bosses in the, in the original game were just boring, stupid. I mean, it, they recycled the same boss fight over and over again, like, ad nauseum. I, I think there was, let's see, there was, like, three or four boss fights against, you know, more or less like a, a, a con, what a, you know, like a contra boss wall type thing. Um, there was, uh, yeah, there were a couple of fights with just, like, you know, a super mechanized soldier, and I don't know, the, the original game, the original game's bosses were kind of boring, even though the rest of the game was, well, Freaking cool. Now you have Devin, you have no experience with Bionic Commander like this one, the original, or any iteration, right? Mm, absolutely none. Alright, so you get like the, the basic story behind it though? Sort of. And I, I must say that the green and yellow jumpsuit is definitely subtle. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's it's a lot more subtle than, than Fuchsia with baby blue stripes, isn't this it? This is true. Yeah. I mean, I, I really kind of want to know which queer, you know, queer guy without a straight eye decided that that would be a, a good choice for a uniform. Just seems uh, ridiculously silly to me. Were they purple in the original one? Um, yeah, but I, I think that was mostly just because the, the NES was not terribly powerful, and they needed to make sure that enemies would stand out among every background, so they chose something that had definite conflicts to pretty much every background in the game. You know, they would look good whether or not you were fighting in front of a blue sky, or if you were fighting in front of, you know, let's say, uh, you know, let's say you were fighting in front of, like, uh, in front of, like, the secret mountain pa mountain pass base, and you, know, you were fighting amongst uh, a very snowy, cloudy, and uh, rocky background. So, I mean, the, you know, the fuchsia is not going to, to show up in any of those backgrounds at all, so it, it provided a great contrast to the game. But yeah, I mean, now I, I, I'm i really hoping they, they stuck with the fuchsia just for nostalgia's sake. I really do. Because <laughs> otherwise, the, the whole idea of trying to take an army seriously with this friggin' 
Uniform is just... It's... It, it's no. Just no. Th this uniform is no. Yeah, this uniform is no, in my opinion. That's that's the... That's gotta be the, the best way I can put it. Mm. Pee pee pee! Intruder alert! I saw pie, pie, pie. Yeah, pie, pie, whatever. I don't know. Pie. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, all right, it's Devin wants it to be pie, so I guess it's pie for the rest of the game. Oh, keep quiet, you little chatterbox. Pie, pie, pie. Pie. What did you call me? He's calling me pie. Pie. Pie, pie. 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 That's it. Next up, the junkyard. Population you! Oh, sick burn! The amount of 80s in this game is just truly outstanding. Oh, there's more 80s? Oh, the, the whole game like is. 80s taglines? Yeah, the whole so. game is just like bad 80s punchlines, really. Uh, gotta love the 80s. You don't have to, but yeah. it certainly helps to play a game like this. Oh! Ah, oh, that looks like it did nothing! Yeah, oh, and then he shot me in the face. Okay! This is, uh... Well, he showed you pie. If you don't knock it off with the pie references, I'm going to 3.14 you in the goddamn face. I guarantee you will not like my randomly repeating decimals. One good thing about these uh, barrels here is they also act as uh, bullet shields, which is kind of which is definitely nice and pretty essential to a lot of the the fighting that you do in the game. Oh yeah, it doesn't appear that you have a shield. Nope, not at all. I mean, well, you can. You can deflect um, bullets with. God damn it! Your aim is a little off. Well, it doesn't, you know, be one thing if you were all stationary, but I got to get my mad 8-bit skills back up. Boom! That was more successful. And he's done. Oh, I wanted to go for a victory swing, but I guess that's not happening. You killed Pi. I did kill Pi, and he gave me some grenades, so that's always good. That was a grenade pie? Grenade uh, apparently, pie. yeah, I guess it was a grenade pie. It's, um, the name of it's actually a D1 beetle, but... Yeah, according to, uh, my, uh, fiancé, apparently we, uh, have to, have to call those things pie from now on. Just, uh, just humor her. Just a little bit nuts. Anyways... Anyways. Hey! I dropped off on you. You put S's on the end of anyway now. Yeah, it happens. Terrific! You've got grenades! Actually, you want to do the female voice? You can be the, the nagging helicopter pilot that's always telling me shit about items I already know. Okay. Terrific! You've got grenades! They can be thrown over enemy cover, and if you throw them while crouching, they drop down on the platform beneath you. Climb above the enemy with your bionic arm and use the grenades to fully enjoy the advantage of higher ground. The grenades do add a nice little bit of uh, strategy to the game that you wouldn't uh, would normally be rather difficult. To be perfectly honest, you can now I can chuck a grenade. I can um, if I'm on a platform above, I can drop them down to uh, be able to take out enemies, which is definitely quite nice. Um, it uh, it certainly makes things a lot more a lot easier. I mean, getting all the different weapons throughout the game. Oh, here we go. I got uh, flares. Flares. Yeah. Okay. Well, the uh, the next combat area I'm going into is like completely dark so if you don't have the flares you are not going to be able to see jack shit you're just blind uh, yeah pretty much I mean it's 
you're, you're kind of worse than blind, to be perfectly honest. Is that thing an extra life? That is an extra life. Is that what you looked like in the 8-bit era? Um, sort of, but oh, fuck. I, I bounced off some spikes. Which, well, it's a lot better than sticking to them, though. That's all right, you're still learning how to use your bionic arm, I guess. Yeah, I'm... It's not fully upgraded. Yeah. Hey! With those flares, the pitch black darkness in Area 4 won't be a problem anymore. The place will be lit up like an amusement park. I was expecting Christmas tree. Yeah, it's a little bit cliche. All right, looks like we're going to be going into our first uh, top-down fight here. What's that? Um, it's a it's actually a little bit of a throwback to the uh, the whole original universe of this game. Um, started back with Commando, um, one of the uh, leading generals and soldiers in this uh, army that I'm fighting for, the FSA. His name was Super Joe, and he started out this whole franchise with the game Commando, which the the whole game was very much like this. Um. It was, you know, the whole game was like a running gun, top-down perspective. It started in the arcades, had very successful ports on the NES and Commodore 64. Um, you did not have this fantastic arm to be able to, uh... Whip people in the face? Yeah, it, it's, yeah, you can whip people in the face, you can, you know, deflect bullets away with it. It's, uh, it's super helpful, it really is. But, yeah, Super Joe did not have that, he just had his, uh, he had this, fan he had a fantastic machine gun, which is actually a little bit of a secret weapon later in the game you can pick up, and he had, uh, just, yeah, regular grenades like this, but they were limited as opposed to what I have here, which never run out of, you know, completely unlimited. Back off! Alright, so the whole idea behind these top-down stages here is that your helicopter's being jammed by this big anti-aircraft weapon. Okay. So you just have to go in and blow it up. You know, before you get shot yourself. Mm. Oh, and then the helicopter comes back. Yep, then the helicopter comes and rescues your ass. Alright, well, so that was a bit of excitement. Let us move on to Area 04, Area Weapon Store Cage. Alrighty, and we're, uh... We got these lovely little obstructions that are gonna start coming in throughout the game. Pulling stuff apart? Yeah, there are, there are like, stone pillars and things to that nature that are gonna be blocking my path the whole way. Mm -hmm. So, after, you know... It, they they block like all of your your projectiles. They block um, your claw. You know your claw immediately auto attaches to it, and generally just makes your life a lot more difficult. You know I, I can't I can't fire a bullet through it. So if there's enemies on the other side, they protect it. Um, grenades just bounce right off the thing because it is in fact well it's made of stone as you can already see. Um, yeah. And they, they are generally just kind of there to be a pain in my ass. Be in the way. Yeah, pretty much. I see them. Hey, Captain! I'm Agent MA3! I didn't know if you'd get this far, what with it being so dark. But there are flares in the FSA camp in Area 13 that you can use. Didn't we already find those? We did find those. Um. Yeah, if we hit, he know that you would think that, but I mean, it. I actually did try it out once. It's possible to get all the way there. You just kind of have to have um, perfect timing, and frankly, a horseshoe up your ass to be able to be lucky enough to get that far in <laughs> pitch blackness. Because you can't see spikes, you can't see enemies, you can't see your own hand in front of your goddamn face. Roger that. I've made sure you can proceed through the area now without too much fuss, apart from the pitch black darkness and the armed guards. Ah, oh, crap. You better stay cool, man. Yeah. Oh, 80s. Oh, yeah. It's, this game is so 80s. 
It, it, it's it's 80s in like the best possible day glow sense of the word. Yeah, if things turn sour, Haley's just a call away. Yeah, I heard about her. Brash, talented, and a real fox. Don't suppose you can put in a good word for me, eh? Good luck, man. Yeah, so these agents are kind of a jackass, and I think they all kind of have a bit of a crush on my helicopter pilot. Yeah. And as far as I can tell, she just wants, like, nothing to do with men. Okay, see, so this is where I could start to get myself in a little bit of trouble if I if I move too quickly. Wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I gotta make sure that I have another block to push into mm -hmm. before I make my move. Otherwise, I have no choice but to set off the alarm and... Then you're screwed. Yeah, and basically spend the rest of the level just constantly fighting off a never-ending stream of enemies that resupply themselves, know exactly where I am, and are immediately aggressive. Sir, what are we gonna do about the first platoon? I don't know, Private. They're completely relentless. Check that out one hell of that a mustache. mustache. Damn! How much wax do you think he has to go through to keep that thing looking like that? Uh, I mean, I, I thought I that I words. thought that my hair was was super spiky, but oh man, mm, that is no? that is something. That that mustache is something else. That is some commitment to personal grooming in the morning. Yeah. I don't know, Private. They're completely relentless. The commander is so weird. He has enough medals on his chest to absorb the impact from a ravaging rhino. And with that horde of suicidal men at his disposal, no one can outflank him. No wonder he lives to get more medals. Where is he going to place them next? On his back! It's the only space left on that tacky uniform of his. Oh! So yeah, that uh, that's just a little bit about the uh, the boss in this level here. He uh, yeah, he has so many medals on his chest that he his he's actually fashioned himself his own incredibly ugly looking bulletproof vest. So you're fighting a Metal armored peacock? Yes. Ah. As a ma as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure he has a peacock, um, like a metal peacock on his helmet as well. Oh, really? It well, it's either a peacock or it's an eagle. Um, I can never, I, yeah, I can never really tell which, considering I, I'm usually more concerned with. Um, that's right, I need the rocket launch to get over there. Um, I'm usually more concerned with uh, pumping as many bullets into his face as I can as quickly as possible. And not dying. Yes, and not dying. That's that's pretty important to, to continue with the whole fighting and the killing and the boo-ba-boo-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-boo-ba-bo